Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. So there are 10 module assignments for my course, and these are short Python assignments that you'll complete just to prove your understanding of what we covered in each of these modules. Now, when you submit them to my API that I have running, there is a auto checker that runs and lets you know really how well you did on the assignment before I actually go through and grade it for real. This just gives you a chance to submit it, resubmit it, make sure that there's no simple errors there. The final grade going into Canvas occurs when I actually, when the due date passes, and that's a semi-automated process as well, but those, that's the point at which your grade actually goes into Canvas. Now, I send out these API keys to Washington University students. If you're enrolled in my class, you should have gotten an API key from me. If you did not, please contact me, and I will be sure to send you one. Usually, I send these all out about a week before class actually starts. If you're not enrolled at Washington University and you just want to make use of the auto checker, then you can click on the Patreon link that is on the About page for my YouTube channel, and I offer that at one of the levels. That's the only grading that I offer for anybody outside of Washington University. Outside of WashU, you can definitely look at all the videos, see all the assignments, but I only actually grade the students who are actively enrolled in my course. To see all my videos about Kaggle, neural networks, and other AI topics, click the subscribe button and the bell next to it and select all to be notified of every new video. Okay, let's start with Colab and see how we can submit an assignment using just that. There are many different ways to go about this, but this is just one way that will work and is pretty easy. So if you go to the GitHub repository for the class, Jeff Heaton T81 558 Deep Learning, and if you go into assignments, let's actually submit assignment one. Assignment one is very simple. You just have to put your API key in. This is what identifies you as a student and lets me track who has sent what. You should have gotten that in email from me, but if you for some reason did not, send me an email and let me know so that I can send you. Now, I only send those to Washington University students. If you are not a Washington University student and would like to use the auto grading capability that's built into this class, then there's options for that if you look on the Patreon uh, support site that goes along with my YouTube channel. Now this is assignment one. It's Python code. You'll notice that every notebook has this open in Colab link here. We'll go ahead and click that. This opens it in Colab. So now you can actually run the code, but you have to go one step further. You have to copy it to your Google Drive. It says creating a copy, and now it's here. Now I would say make it your own at this point. So copy of assignment Jay Heaton, put whatever your name is for there. I'll leave it as Jay Heaton since that's me. I've renamed it. If you go to your Google Drive, see in Google Drive when you use Colab, you get this Colab's notebook. If you go into there, you should see it. Looks like it hasn't completely renamed it from uh, what I had it do there. Let's see, save. After you do the save, now it's renamed. Now that's a problem that I've seen some students get hung up on is Google Drive does not always immediately update, so you needed to do the save like I did there. Make sure that you can truly see it in Google Drive with the correct name. And sometimes after you've saved it, you may have to wait a couple of minutes before you can actually submit your assignment. Usually you won't immediately download and then five minutes later submit it, unless you're really, really fast at these. But this is... This is the first assignment. I list some of the common problems that you can run into and what you might need to do to resolve those. This first part here, you'll need to run. That is going to bring Colab online and actually map your Google Drive into Colab so that you can get access to it. So I'm going to go ahead and run this section. See here how it says note not using Google Colab? This should flip to using Colab once this comes through. Okay, you've also got to do this. This is very important. This is connecting Colab to your G Drive 
Unfortunately, you're going to do this a lot during the semester. They make you do this and redo it. Believe me, I've done this probably a hundred times. Click that. You click allow. This is your, this is not your API key. Don't be confused with this. This is not what you're using to submit it. This is just to connect Colab to your G drive. We'll go back to here. We'll go back. We have to go back to that copy one that you made. So yeah, it's this one. We'll paste that into there. Press enter. And it's authenticating. This takes just a moment. And it should show you this. Note, using Google Colab and TensorFlow 2.x is active. This is a handy command that I give you. I only put it in the first assignment, but you can copy and paste it into the others if you so desire. I'm going to run it. This exclamation point means to run a Unix command. ls is a Unix command called list. It's kind of like directory in DOS. And we are basically just listing the contents of my notebooks directory. That's doing essentially the same thing as going over into Google Colab. I'm sorry. This is essentially doing the same thing as going over into Google Drive and looking and seeing that it's here. So we'll go back to here so we can see it. We will need this name. So I'm going to go ahead and copy it. But it's essentially, it's the same one up here. You could copy that as well. This is the submit function. I just provide this to you. You don't really need to know how it works. It's just an API call fundamentally over the web. It calls a web address on my main server and that tracks all of these assignment submissions. It's all over HTTPS, so it's all encrypted. Just run this. If you get an error saying can't find submit, it means you probably forgot to run this. Here is where you need to put your key. This is the API key that I emailed to you. I am just going to magically move mine into my clipboard. You would have probably actually gone and copy and pasted it from your email or wherever you wrote it down. But I'm going to select the one that was there. By the way, if I do run just the one that's there, I will get an error. Actually, I'll get a couple of errors. Let me use this just to demonstrate. Let's run this. It's not going to work well. No directory users, Jay Heaton projects, blah, 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 blah. This is because the file name right here, which is the file file name to the what you're trying to submit is not valid. That's because I'm using the Mac Linux one, uh, but I want to use this one. This is the Google Colab one. And you also need to change this so that it's your name. All right, so now it's got my name in there. Now let's run it. Now, if you get another message back saying can't find it, look and make sure that you have this exactly like it is. Make sure that this matches what is up here, make sure that you've done file save and maybe use that list command that I gave you earlier just to be absolutely sure it's there. Failing all of that, give it maybe five minutes. Sometimes Google takes a little bit to synchronize. All right, so that's forbidden. Let me go ahead and put my API key in here. So that's the key for me. Don't use that one either. It'll get deleted before class starts. Those are just temporary keys that I use. And all this is doing is submitting this hard-coded CSV file here, which is essentially the truth table for an exclusive OR operator. But that's what this assignment is expecting. So I'll click this. It takes it a moment to run. And what this is doing is basically sending the assignment to me. You don't get your grade yet, but it does check it for you. And it's a fairly advanced checker, reasonably advanced. Say you change something, like say this column here was named Z instead of A. Now it'll get mad. Because right now it's saying no warnings on your data. You'll probably do well, but no guarantee. The final grade happens in Canvas, and you don't have a grade in Canvas after you submitted this. I will I will either manually put your grade in there, or I have a automated process that runs every morning. I mean, if it checks your code and it sees nothing in addition to what the auto checker checks, it'll just, it'll put full points in there for you if you're not late. You do lose points if you submit these past the due date, so don't, don't do that. If you submit it more than a week late, you'll get a zero on it, so also don't do that. Let me go ahead and run it now with that column renamed. Now the auto checker will detect something is wrong. Warning solution header is A, B, C, but your headers are B, C, and Z. That's not good. So you will you can get warnings from it. And feel free to resubmit. You can submit it until it's perfect. That is the point of these 10 assignments. They're to get you to try this. And don't worry about, you could submit this 100 times. I mean, don't denial of service attack me or anything, but you could submit it 100 times. And if your 101th time is completely correct, you'll get an A on it.
that's just the way this works. Go ahead and run it, just as long as that 101th time is not late. All right, and it even tracks it. I've submitted it 13 times, bad luck. If you wanna check this later on, you can use this code down here. I only put this code on assignment one, but if you run this with that same API key in there, well, that just defines it. Then you run it here, I have to put my key in. It shows me the progress for me on all these various assignments. That was me probably testing the submits, and then if I wanna check just one assignment, I can click this, and that shows me specifically what warning I got on one particular assignment. Okay, so that is how you use Google Colab to submit these. I assume most of you will probably be doing that, but if you, let's also see how we would do this from a Windows computer, just locally. It would be pretty similar for Mac as well. I won't show Mac individually for this. So first, change into the directory that you downloaded the class into, and make sure you have your TensorFlow environment activated. Conda activate TensorFlow and Jupyter Notebook and it launches it. Go into the assignments folder if you weren't there already but this is assignments. We'll go into assignment one put it into Python 3.7 TensorFlow, rename this so that it is you. Don't open it in Colab. This part here for the Colab instructions, you can run that or you can not run it, totally up to you. It won't prompt you for anything like it did when we were doing this in Colab. It'll just say not using Google Colab. And this command won't work in Windows, so don't run that. We'll define the submit function, and now we're ready to submit it. So I had magically copied my key into the clipboard. So there's my key. Make sure you change this so that the file name matches what your file name is called, so the path is correct and we'll run that. Ah, it helps to put this into the right format for this. This is Windows, C colon users, and this machine, I'm Jay Heaton actually. I'm not using a projects directory. So this has to match on your own computer. That all matches assignment and then Jay Heaton. This is actually a good example. So if you are getting that error, go to a command prompt or C colon users. Jay Heaton, you just check and make sure one by one the, these parts of it are correct. T81, assignments, assignment, Jay Heaton class one, IPY and B. And if you can do DIR and see your command there, or see your file there, then it exists. I'm just going to copy and paste. I'm going to put this over top of this. We have to do these double slashes because that is how you properly encode a backsplash. Try not to make any mistakes like I just did there. And now it worked. So there was some minor typo I had in there, but that's how I tend to validate paths. So that was actually a good example. I wish I could say I'd done that on purpose, but that was obviously a typo on my part. So now you have it submitted. It says no warnings on your data. This does check your, I'm repeating this some from the, the collab, but just in case you fast forwarded the collab part. If I make something wrong with this, it will now show you, okay, your headers are wrong or something like that. This is an auto check. You'll see your actual grade appear in Canvas usually by the next day. I have a second auto process that runs every morning and checks for submissions. And if it, de if it detects nothing wrong with your submission, it looks like it's a perfect score, then it's just going to give you full credit in Canvas and go on. If it's something I need to check more specifically, then I will go in and enter your grade myself. Now, if you ever want me to look at what you've done in this code, now if you mess it up, I will be looking at it because the auto corrector won't be able to figure it out and it'll send it to me. But if you want me to just, if you want any opinions from me on your coding technique or anything like that, I would be glad to look at um, any of these if the auto corrector has passed it through as, as perfect. And also, once it's about a week past the due date, which means if you haven't submitted it, you have a zero, I will go through and release my solution file for each of these. So you'll see how I actually did it, and I'll talk about it during the, the following weekly Zoom meeting that we have. Thank you for watching this video. If you're a student at WashU and you run into any problems submitting your assignments, please contact me. All grades will be in the Canvas system that only WashU students have access to. And that is it for submitting assignments. Good luck with the semester. And if you have any questions, definitely let me know. If you want to stay up to date with all that I do on this course and other AI projects, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much.